here from the beginning, I'd like just to uh, make a, a snapshot that uh, you <laughs> refer to many times. Uh, this convention uh, has really brought uh, two uh, have two religions who have always thought to be a uh, hundred percent contradictory to one another uh, together to talk. And the purpose of the talk was to discover commonalities and to address issues of differences. And we, I think, I believe we did uh, to a certain degree of uh, scholarship that I really will always remember uh, that uh, this meeting has gained me a lot of knowledge and a lot of uh, experience. Uh, we discussed God, we discussed Jesus, we discussed uh, the salvation, as you have heard the last session. We also discussed the books, Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Jesus, the Quran, the Bible. Uh, each w took one full session. Uh, in a brief uh, snapshot, I would say that the Muslim position on all these issues is as follows. Uh, Islam, uh, submission to the will of God, is the religion of Abraham, Mo, uh, Noah, Moses, Jesus. Uh, also, I would like to uh, tell our Christian uh, guests who uh, took the trouble to come today and be with us. You are welcomed. Uh, it is our pleasure to have you. Uh, the Quran has uh, mentioned the birth, the life of Jesus Christ in two lengthy uh, parts of the Quran. Actually, there is a long uh, chapter under the name of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. And uh, in this Quran, you will find that really Prophet Muhammad, by the inspiration of God, did what Jesus said he will do. He will praise me. He will glorify me. Uh, when Prophet uh, Jesus spoke about uh, the Paracletus or the Comforter that he is going to come, uh, we revere uh, and love and respect Prophet Jesus. We think and believe in the virgin uh, birth of his mother. We believe that she was chaste. And also, uh, we believe that Jesus was uh, not only, as some would love to say, a mere prophet. No, he is a glorified, uh, honored prophet, among other honored and glorified prophets as well. Uh, his teachings is the teachings of Islam. And I would like to conclude by reading uh, just three verses. Uh, I will just uh, go right after John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. I will go to John uh, 3.20. Uh, he said, uh, Jesus talking, uh, he who believes in him is not condemned. Uh, he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is a judgment that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrote in God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. Uh, as you have uh, quoted a verse from the uh, Bible, I would like to uh, refer to one in the Quran uh, about the light. In Surah uh, 24, verse uh, 35, I had not planned to do this until you referred to that one on light. Uh, but where it's talking about uh, God as the light of the world. And then it gives an illustration. And all people may not agree with uh, my understanding of the interpretation, but he talks about a light shining out through glass. And I get the picture there of uh, one of the Christian monasteries uh, with a light shining out from a lamp through the monastery window. Uh, that's, wh that's what I see as sort of a reminder of what Christ is like. I have to confess that frequently through, th if that is a correct uh, interpretation of, of the sort of the symbol which reminded uh, the prophet Muhammad of the light of God, I have to confess that Christians frequently have not uh, uh, had that kind of light shining. Uh, out, and it, it has been uh, greatly uh, dimmed. And uh, that leads me into uh, my final comment, where 
I find a great deal of commonness in the experience of uh, Christians and uh, Muslims. Uh, I have described uh, how Christians see uh, humans as having a bias to evil, and as I read some of the Muslim scholars, I see that this is their experience too. Ibn Hazm, a champion of uh, fundamentalist doctrine, uh, believed that the human soul, if left to itself, spontaneously inclines towards dishonesty. Uh, the most celebrated um, theologian uh, in Sunni Islam, Al-Ghazali, uh, says that the fall is repeated for each individual. Uh, Sayyid Hussein uh, Nasser, one of my professors, a, a Shiite Muslim, <coughs> talks about uh, the limited prison of a person's carnal soul. And uh, then the Imam Khomeini, uh, which uh, I agree a great deal with in, in his understanding of, of humans, as he said, if the whole world is gathered to him, he will not be satisfied, that is, to a human. You see, the mighty who have great power seek more power. Arrogance sh should be stopped, and ego should be controlled in everything. The downfall of man is that he wants absolute power, the power of God. And this, I think, Christians and Muslims uh, can agree on. Uh, you should pay attention, and all of us should pay attention, to the fact that man's calamity is his carnal desires. And this exists in everybody and it is rooted in the nature of man. Now, I realize this is a more Shiite uh, understanding, but it's one that I can resonate with uh, as a Christian. And that's why what we're discussing for both of us is so important, uh, why we both need to listen very, very closely uh, to each other. Uh, and this is one reason why I, as a Christian at least, uh, see that uh, the need for what uh, we understand or what Jesus understood as a new birth uh, to deal with this kind of a situation and may God grant that we may uh, be of help to each other as we seek to together uh, overcome the condition in which we find ourselves. Well, I'd like to uh, thank you all for all your patience and uh, for participation like to share with you a few seconds. I promise I'm not going to take a long time, but uh, I see a necessity for us to understand uh, that we need to have these kind of dialogues. And uh, Phil has uh, been through many of these dialogues, management and organization of these dialogues, and I feel that we reached a level where we can have channels of communication open where we can listen to one another and wait and be patient and smile and, and you know sometimes get angry and sometimes ask for more time and sometimes open new points and so on so it's really the whole event is a new experience for all of us and I guess in my opinion it's it's, it's very enlightening experience and it's very positive experience to help me myself to see a lot of things that I was not aware of. And, uh, it helped me understand how the Christian mind think. Uh, always uh, deal with Christianity through the Quran, and the Quran really does not teach Christi Christianity to tell you the truth. It answers certain issues concerning Christianity. I felt there is a need to learn about Christianity, and uh, promise as a Muslim that in the future we'll plan for sessions like this to learn about Christianity from Christians themselves, not from Muslim sources, that would be very helpful for us. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Vagula, Dr. O. Woodbury, uh, and uh, Chastain, uh, Reverend Chastain, uh, Dr. Morsi, uh, Ma'am Shakir Sayyid, and uh, Dr. Jeffrey Lang, Dr. Jamal Badawi, and Dr. Paul Matson, who left, uh, both of them left. I'd like to thank you all for your participation, and on behalf of the, uh, Jack Corey and uh, Reverend Jack Corey, uh, participation was uh, uh, very enlightening to the whole discussion.
and Brother Hamza, both, both of them came in fact